There are all sorts of automatic gate systems on the market. Most of them still require you to stop the car. This week, I'm reviewing a gate system that works by driving into it. It's called the bump gate. Its developers say that this reduces running costs and wear on the car. So I've come to Gippsland to install one and see what it's like. The install of the new gate started like any other, but we had to be very careful to get the two gate posts exactly square. We also had to be spot on with the gap for the gate, as the catch plate has to be the right distance from the gate to work. This took a bit of fine tuning. Just like a bought one. The bump gate kit is fully inclusive. It contains everything you need, even the hinges for the gates. And of course, instructions. The first job is to get your hinge extension installed in the gate, making sure that it's straight with the gate. Now that you've got your extension bracket fitted to the gate, put it on a 200mm post in the middle of the gateway, get it level, and mark the position on your post that you want to install your supplied bottom bracket. They want you to use their bottom bracket because it's the right distance out from the post. And we need to make sure before we screw that bottom bracket in that it's level this way and that way. Now for the next part, installing the locking pin at the other end of the gate requires a little bit of surgery. The first thing you're going to do is remove the spring pin from your hook bracket and then you're going to turn it around, face it backwards and mark the hole that you're going to drill for your 12.5mm pin hole. Once you've drilled your hole, reinsert your locking pin. All right, that I think is good. Next up, using a plumb bob to get my vertical, I want to measure 860 mil from the top of the bottom bracket. And this is going to be the center point of my top bracket. Now we have to put a coach screw 50 mil above the center of the gate bracket and we need to leave that sticking out of the post a little bit. So we'll drill a hole in there and put it away. And now we fit the top bracket and the gate is assembled on the posts. Next I checked out flat surface on the post for the catch plate. It has to be level in all directions as the gate swings both ways. Now that we've got the hinges set up and we've got the catch set up and the gates moving freely, we come to the part where we have to install the bump arms. Now the bump arms have got to stay in two parts because you've actually got to feed them through the gate and if you're really careful you can do this without having to cut any more line wires because every time you cut your gate you're weakening it. So what we need to do is set up our centre pivot cut the center pivot to the right length it comes a little bit taller than you need for the standard farm gate then you slip the bump gates on with the kangaroo pointing in the right direction Bring this down and then hook up your top bracket and you're going to need three sets of arms for this and you want to clamp it to the top of the gate as well. Alright, now that we've got that installed we can fit our other bump arm. I'm going to throw these on top and bottom.
Now we've got this set up so that this pivot arm is just above the gate mat and it doesn't foul on it. We can then secure this with a bolt. Next up we connect our release cable with these cable clamps. We're going to start out on this side of the cable bracket, run to the end of the gate, through the spring mechanism and back to the other side. Now you want to pull this tight enough just to put a tiny bit of tension on the pin but you don't want it to be pulling back too far because that's what's securing your gate home. And you can move the cable into these different hole positions to adjust how much force the gate puts on the pin at the other end. So I've driven 250 kilometres to put this post hole in and my luck's holding. I've found roots back to hand just as well for this digging bar. <laughs> Setting up the catch plates is actually quite a precise operation. You've got to have this hook low enough to clear your gate mat but at the same time it's got to be high enough so that the top of this frame catches the gate hook below this bar and that means that when the gate slams into the gate hook this catches it until it lets it go and there's your delay mechanism. The post also has to lean slightly towards the gate to allow the hook here to be exactly parallel with this plate here. And if you can achieve all of that, your gate will work properly. If you're out or you're sloppy on your install with your catcher posts, you're going to have ongoing problems with this bump gate system. So that's why it pays to take your time. Uh, I very rarely ever um, suggest using concrete in fence posts. This is one of those rare exceptions because the wet concrete will let you adjust and move your post so that you get this plate exactly right and you can be assured your bump gate's going to work. We're now going to put a steel post just in front of here to stop the bump gate touching this catch post for a week to allow the concrete to properly cure in the ground before we start using it because we don't want the gate to hit this post and bump it out of alignment. At first I was a bit too timid. But pretty soon I found the right speed for the gate to work. It also pays to use a quality, high strength gate. And last but not least, to adjust the speed of return, all you have to do is unscrew this little bolt that you installed above the top hinge. And that puts more pressure on the gate and it uses the gate as a spring to speed up the rate of return. So if you move this adjustment screw in and out, you can actually alter the dwell time of your bump gate. Spending the time to get it right is really critical Adjusting the screws to make sure that the gate dwell time is right is important for the sort of vehicle that you expect to come through the gate. In summing it up, this is a well-made product. The instructions are a bit tricky, but Paul Muir, the owner of the company, was very helpful. I had to ring him a couple of times to sort things out, but I've made sure that I've shown those key points in this video. So if you are installing a bump gate into the future, this video might come in handy. Guys, if you like this sort of content and you found this useful, please don't forget, hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up. And there's plenty of links to products like the Bump Gate on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.